Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are not into a flight sim. This is any program open currently. Well, on my mon on this monitor that I have, and uh, yeah, we're going to do a PFPX tutorial. Uh, you might have noticed from the thumbnail and the title of the video, and uh, I'm just going to show you how to basically use um, PFPX and just really like how I use it and everything. And uh, it just lets you know that tracks, you see it's none currently, just down here. Uh, currently my subscription for PFPX has expired. Um, so therefore, I don't get all of the, the live stuff going on. Uh, but it does, I do, I do have weather, uh, which is Active Sky, uh, connected up. I'll show you how to do that. And also I have Navigraph connected up to PFPX, so I've got the latest NAV data. Right, so let's go to settings here, and uh, you can just customize everything, your aqua style, black style, and all that, and uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, but you want to go to the weather page, if you want to, if you have Active Sky, you pretty much want to find the, uh, the, it's normally around here, you'd um, have your username here, and uh, the rest of the stuff connecting up to these two things here, uh, normally at updated roaming thing. And up to the weather. Got Rex as well, uh, but I don't have that. And uh, so everything else is all that. And you get online, but you're gonna have to uh, the online weather. Well, my subscription's off, uh, so that's that. So yeah, I got the weather. Got the uh, the nav data supplied by uh, FS manage, uh, data manager, FMS. Sorry. Uh, so that's all good. So pretty much, you've got to set up a flight and uh, get a nice little company route going or anything you want to do for your flight uh, so what we're going to do is plan a flight for the next video which will be from Washington to Heathrow so what we really want to do quickly is just put in the IKEA codes in so Washington is K-I-A-D along with Heathrow is E-G-L-L as you can see it's already put the runways in uh, which is might be wrong because I don't actually have Access Sky set up just yet, but I'm doing a past flight, which will be in the 30th of November. Uh, but currently, we can't really do that because it doesn't like it doing in the background. Uh, so what I'm going to do, um, because this is a scheduled air service, I'm going to put that on there if you want. I don't really mind. And uh, you can put in the date of uh, time of departure. Uh, let me just put that back in there. You can actually see it says local time. So this is always GMT, this one here, uh, but local time is the one you want so we want to be local time at 10 30 uh so that would be at uh, i think it's 02 30 uh no just one off so 03 that gives us time of 10 30 local time departure which is what what do we want and then arrival at 11 40 maybe uh it shouldn't take eight hours and 10 minutes uh what you can do here is put the flight number and the call sign in uh which is ba 292 because he's already put that in sometimes uh if you put in like some sort of coat uh i don't know what this part of it is it might come out the wrong one you can still come in here and like change it if you want to be a e i don't know but you can you you can always change that so b a w and that's pretty much that setup uh yeah so what you can do is well because i'm doing a past uh, a flight that's already been done i'm just going to go and see what runway the aircraft took off from uh, which is runway 30, and because uh, all the winds are going to be exactly the same as what it actually was, wasn't it? So, and it landed in Heathrow on runway two, uh, zero 09 left. Double check that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So, so it landed on zero 09 left. Uh, so that's all set up there. You can tell how much taxi outs and ins and all that. Uh, so that's all fine that just calculates the fuel later on here you can see taxi fuel uh, needed you will calculate that from the, your taxi as taxi and once you've got your aircraft set up so as you can see I've got loads of aircraft in here already from like all the flights we've done uh, well not all of them got some Embraer's in here got 747 uh, freighter got well I don't know why I did that but yeah <laughs> right so Gonna add a new aircraft. Gonna override the uh, the actual uh, what's it called the 747 I have, uh, but currently I don't actually know what it's. And uh, 
the registration number is, uh, which I probably could check down here, uh, which is going to be one of these bad boys. Uh, I think one of these. I'm not sure actually. But hey, let me go and cut the video and uh, let me quickly find out for you. Right, welcome back. Yep, so it was those uh, G Civics or G CV, the one I just uh, found there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add new aircraft and uh, just enter it myself and show you how you guys can do it. So you just enter the registration really in here. Uh, so I V C I V X is the one I want to do. And uh, I don't know why, but I just copy and paste it into there. I don't actually have to. Uh, it's not compulsory, but I'll just do it anyway because it's cool. Uh, so what you want to do is go and find the Boeing 747. Here we go. Here it is. So you want to click on that. And uh, hopefully PMDG, if like they already install like new data for the uh, PFPX. So everything's all good there. And you can see it's got three different... Oh, okay, there's more than three, but it's kind of overlaps here. This is all... Uh, you can like add things into it. So pretty much what British Airways use for the 747s is the Rolls Royce ones, the RB211, or one of these two. Uh, I'm just going to click the second one, and uh, that's all set up really. And that's all you really have to do. I mean, you can do some little treat uh, tweaks if you want. Uh, this cargo capacity might be all right, and that, and all that. Uh, that's all that really. And equipment and all that, you can just change it all, all yourself. You can change the your ETOPS uh, range if you want, and uh, that's that. So, pretty much, you click save, and uh, it goes in there because it's a new aircraft. Uh, I'm going to click close uh, because I have the aircraft. And uh, if, you've already, if, you, if you've already like configured an aircraft before, you can go and scroll down here and see if you can find it. Uh, here it is. So there, yeah, that's all loaded in. So you can see all this, like, everything's popped in here. You can still change some stuff here if you want, uh, without actually changing the actual aircraft, uh, which is cool. So, what you can do is set minimum or max allowable fuel. Uh, because I'm doing a very long flight, I'm going to do minimum. Normally, if I was to do, like, a really short flight, I can normally, um, just, like, if I was just doing maybe London City to Luxembourg and back probably do max fuel so I can get both flights done in without actually having to refuel uh, which is pretty cool uh, so that's how you can do it but I'm just going to set minimum for now uh, as we're not going to get enough fuel to go there and back I don't think this taxi fuel's all already in there I don't really change that because I always normally have enough fuel the costs don't really have to f uh, matter about really uh, you, can only, you can put change it if you want but I don't really know what it does. Uh, so that's fuel set up and everything. Make sure that's all set. Uh, you can do um, change the policy as well. Uh, but I normally have it just stuck on ETOPS already. EOPS, sorry. EUOPS. Uh, but you can change it, like I said. I don't think it really changes the simulation much. Uh, so that's that. So what you can do is you can go to the payload, actually. I don't know why. Tell me to fuel first. Oh, no, that's just me changing, uh, choosing it. And you can set in how many stuff you want. Uh, it comes out a total of zero fuel, or you, or you can just like put it yourself. Like I want a zero fuel weight of that, and obviously it does all of that stuff for you. But if you want, you can click random payload. It does adults, children, infants, baggage, cargo, and then the zero fuel weight comes out like so. That's what I normally like, just random really. Uh, so there, that's our zero fuel weight for our Washington to Heathrow flight. And we're going to find the destination alternates. Uh, so that's nice to know. We've got uh, Gatwick, Luton and Stansted in there. I uh, don't know why that one's... I don't know what uh, airport that is. Farnborough. Yes, I don't think we're going to be landing there anytime soon. Uh, but definitely Gatwick will be our highest priority uh, to be landing on. Obviously we've got some E-top set up. Uh, so... Actually, let me just talk about the ad adequate airports. ETOPS, as we fly over the water, if something goes wrong, uh, we just need to tell the uh, flight planner, okay, uh, these are the airports we could land on, because uh, the aircraft can go for 140 minutes or 180 minutes, I can't remember what it said, uh, but that's, yeah. So these are adequate airports, which you can just copy and paste into these ETOPS page here, so 180. 
paste that into there. And uh, hopefully you can see the E-tops coming up there. So the, obviously the airport is like bang in the middle here. Um, and uh, if you want to do the next one as well. And hopefully that should connect up the both sides like so. So we, can all, we always got land around us landing at an airport. Uh, good airports with correct runway lengths. So that's E-tops pretty much. Uh, but we don't need it. So we can clear that up. But if it does like have e tops in red or anything, uh, and you can click disable uh, if you want, but you can always just click that and just choose the e tops. Like I said, get it from here, and so they're, they're the airports you want. So the route is next. Normally, what I'm going to do is upper assistant, air, not assistant airspace, sorry, and uh, that obviously just gets the higher airways there, and there you can see it's already got the route in here. See the route is here. And if you have Navigraph charts like I do, you can copy and paste this bit and uh, control copy. And uh, let me go and bring over Navigraph charts for you here. And uh, so this is the flight. Obviously, I've got no route set up here. So what I can do is click edit. And uh, so this is the basic sort of setup you want. So SID start and the departure or, or departure, SID start and arrival. And uh, you can just control paste what you just copied. Uh, just let you know as well. Uh, so no error found. Um, you can't do. You can't actually enter SIDs and stars. You might be able to, but I don't know how to do it. Um, you might just actually to get rid of the actual word SID. Oh, I might be learning something new today. Yeah. So see that doesn't work. Um, uh, so not, I don't know why SIDs don't work, but now you've got your route in uh, for your departure. Uh, let's go and uh, bring that back over and get PFPX back. Right, so that's the route. That's what your route will be. If you want to copy and paste that at all, there's your route. Um, yeah, uh, obviously it accounts for your runways and takeoffs. Make sure you get the uh, takeoff runway and landing runway set up because then it can actually choose your correct route uh, uh well sids and, uh, sids and stars already so that's our flight pretty much set up that's it really and you want to click compute oh, that'll just like compute it uh, and uh, now it's in your results page uh which currently is just in like a little temporary page but what you want to do is click release and that'll turn it to the schedule plan uh, which we, what we can do, you can have loads of different flights scheduled uh, if you are that busy, uh, but some not. And uh, what I normally do, I go and print it up into the Microsoft PDF. I'll go and open it for you to show you what it looks like. And uh, normally, as you can see, I've got all of the flights I've done. I just normally save them as uh, the route uh, via the airports. Uh, so this one is going to be KIAD to EGLA. GLL for a done a flight with that, but not on the channel. So this is the tricky part. This is the export. You can see I clicked there on the route. Uh, you can also send it to Vatsim if you want uh, by just sending. Maybe just going to click that. You can send to Vatsim, Topcat, Sky Vector, all of that stuff. Uh, so if you want to set your route to Sky Vector, you can all that Vatsim as well that's good so normally I set my route as you can tell this is the this is where the company routes come into uh, except for the 80 80 20 it requires AOC uplink which actually is in the print flight plan so what I do is just what I normally do is get rid of the, uh, the numbers because they're not really needed at all uh, so that goes that's our route and let's get rid of that for now I don't actually need it but as you can see, add-ons here. This is all of the ones you can choose from. And uh, that's that. Let me just go and tell you what I've done. So Airbus Extended has already found it. If you want to find a new one, click it. And uh, so it comes up a browse. And uh, you can just redirect it. If you want to open your uh, Google Earth, if you, want, if you want to send your route to Google Earth, you can put it to there. It's automatically found but you can change it to whatever you want. And I'll show you an example here. So the 777 and the NGX is already saved in here. So it's already got the P3D. And uh, first of all, it says P3D, FSX and all that. You just want to find where your P3D folder is and uh, it'll do the rest of that and the documents folder. Uh, so unless you want to change it yourself and just have the full um, 
don't know if I can find an example. No, I can't. Well, I have the full full location. So that's the triple seven. The NGX is already set up, but there was a little problem I had. Uh, obviously, there's no seven four seven set up in here. So what I chose is the PMD simulations route, and I just clicked browse and I redirected it to the seven four seven. Let me just give you a, a little cheeky. So yeah, I'm going to my P3D folder. So here. And uh, where you want to go from here now is PMDG, and you want to go to the uh, flight plans page and just choose the 747, like so. And that's the 747 setup, uh, and also the wind uplink is already done. Uh, that's what he found already, so that's all good. Remember, just choose the FSX or P3D version, otherwise you're not going to find it. So, I normally put all my flight plans to the prepared files folder. Uh, well, I normally have it. Yeah, I know that's third version one files, but I just I'll just keep it there for now. I can't change it to prepared version four, but that's fine. So you've got some quality wings, uh, some um, flat plans you can do. Don't know if that works with the seven eighty seven, but that's that. So what I've done. I've, you see that in um, a bluey grey colour. That's because I favourited them. Uh, so what I do, I come over to the favourites and click literally just click save. I know it saves it to the NGX and Triple Seven and Airbus flight plans, but I don't care. But as long as it saves to the 747, the wind up link, and the paired uh, uh, folder. I'm going to click save, and that saves everything. Seven routes are saved. And you can now go and close that. So that is really all you need from PFPX. I mean, in the summary, you can actually see where all of your PDF can go. And you can see our route is here as well. I'm going to copy and paste it from there. Um, ATC weather and all that. Using that to sky weather settings. Yep. So that's all good. That is P PFPX set up. What I'm going to quickly show you now is the uh, Adobe PDF. The folder it just comes in. And I'm just going to grab it over here. And this is the output. Obviously, it's got this weird line coming down here. Uh, this is just due to, uh, well, no, I think set up uh, the uh, what's it called? My subscription expired. So yeah, so what you can do is here's all your planning and everything. Uh, you can see everything there. Take off weight. I don't know if you use that, but zero fuel weight is where I normally get it from, and the fuel is where you get the, your fuel from. This is all in kilos. Kind of set it up to be kilos. Uh, well, yeah, and you can actually see how much fuel you'll be using and how much you should have. Um, we're not using, that's how much fuel we would have when you leave. Uh, that's how much you'd be using for the trip fuel with the amount of time of 6 hours and 26 minutes. So that's the time we should be taking with our arrival fuel of 9.6 tonnes. You can see our final reserve uh, for the flight would be 4.7 tonnes as well. Yeah, so that's all the fuel set up. You can see the whole route is in here. You can see that we're soft flight level at 350. Then we're climbing up to 370 for our final step plan. And uh, we're going to descend into Heathrow via the Oc 2F uh, star. So, I hope you enjoyed the little tutorial on how to use PFPX. I uh, hope this helps you, some of you guys. Um, I know it's not freeware, uh, but that's just this just how you can use it, really. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.